Oh, Freya, how you doing? How's the frushki? Yeah. Hello and welcome to my yard. It's a beautiful night and I had a lot of resistance to making videos about gardening because I didn't feel like I was an authority. And which is true, I was not an authority. But then I remembered something that seven years ago when I started Brothers Green, I was definitely not an authority, nor am I now on cooking, but I've still managed to teach you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people around the world how to cook and just feel confident in the kitchen. And I realize farming is the same thing. I think there's a lot of videos out there that are so great. I watch so many different channels and I appreciate all the different things I'm learning, but I feel like most of the people there know so much that sometimes it can be a little intimidating. So I want to create some content that's really simple, really approachable for anyone. Um, if you want to learn how to grow your own food, uh, and just things that I've learned along the way. These are not foolproof techniques. These are not tested for 20, 30 years. They're just things that I'm starting to understand about how you grow food that have completely just shifted my whole perspective and made life absolutely amazing. So I'm just gonna give you first like a little bit of an overview. So when we brought, bought this property, there was no fence. It was just all the trees here were completely overgrown. There was an old like sort of chain link fence that was completely destroyed. This was just all overgrown weeds. So the patio sort of thing was there. This was there. The shed was there. Everything else was just completely overgrown weeds all along the fence line, plus some giant trees right here. This tree was here. This tree was here. This is a mulberry tree. And I started getting to work. And when I first started, the very first thing that I did was I planted this tree. This is an apple tree, Brayburn, and I planted this tree, which is a honey crisp. And anything with honey and crisp in it, you know it's gonna be good. I also planted a peach here. This is a Hellhaven peach and a Mount Royal plum. That was it. And I started messing around in the back a little bit with like some gardening all the way in the back. So last year I started changing things up, started learning more. This was originally just a really simple garden plot right here. Um, I had these berries that I planted back here last year. I started planting a bunch of trees. I have a, you know, a hardy fig tree. I got all these blueberries, um, some other peaches, etc., etc. However, it wasn't until this past year that I really started, after the last growing season, to study permaculture. Which permaculture is like two words combined, permanent agriculture. And the idea is that you're creating this sort of sustainable flowing food system. And what's interesting is I was always so intimidated by it, but I understood and appreciated the concept. And I think the simplest way to sort of talk about permaculture is this idea of building food forests, where if you think about a forest, you know, you go to a forest, it's perfect. No one goes in there and they're not shoveling stuff. Oh, it's like a, whoa. Look at that sunset. I will get back to the story. So, the general concept here, that is beautiful. The general concept here, as you stare off and gaze off into the sun and take some slow, deep breaths and just relax, is that when you're in a forest, things just kind of wildly grow. And even though it might seem like complete randomness, typically forests look really beautiful. Um, and when you start to examine them, understand them, you realize there's actually something going on. Like Mother Nature is creating this system where the food recycles itself. You know, people aren't like going in there and feeding it and changing and amending the soil and watering it. It just does what it does. So the idea with a food forest is to use edible things that you can eat and create a very similar uh, sort of environment. So you just have amazing food all the time. And that's what I've been working on. So I'm learning more and more this year. And it's just blowing my freaking mind because you do little things, you learn little concepts, and your brain just expands. The amount of information I've already expanded, like I said, I'm not an expert, but just from reading this book, Guy's Garden, talking to friends, watching YouTube videos, I'm learning so much, so incredibly fast, just because I'm passionate about it. So this bed here, this used to just be a standard kind of rectangular garden bed where I kind of, the general idea was to go in rows, but to be honest, I like just wanted to see what would happen if I just kind of planted things totally randomly, kind of like a little forest. And it was fun, but what was a little frustrating was it was very hard to get to certain things. 
So this year I'm trying something different. Instead of just growing all my vegetables here and growing fruit every, all over here, I'm gonna actually make these little, they're called fruit guilds. <laughs> we represent the Fruity Pop Guild, the Fruity Pop Guild, the Fruity Pop Guild, and in the name of the Fruity Pop Guild, we wish to welcome you to Munchkin Land. Okay, so, so actually there's some things that I, I still, um, I love learning and I learn as much as I can, but I'm the kind of person that also likes knowing nothing and just learning my, by just doing. Uh, and this is a very important point that I want to bring up. And i got to get something in my hair. I keep having to get it. So for me, I think learning, I think learning from other people's knowledge and mistakes and all that stuff is so great and so powerful. However, sometimes learning how someone else did something uh, and just blindly following it, you might not realize that maybe there are things that um, are worth examining that maybe they either did wrong or you found a new way. So I'm going to kind of urge you to be yeah, to be the own your own pioneer of your life here and that's kind of what I like to do taking as much information but end of the day I just go out and start throwing stuff in the ground and I observe that's how it all started all knowledge came from someone observing so actually these flowers here these tulips typically you would just plant um, the bulb of the tulip not with the actual flower I mean it contains everything but just the bulb you plant them all over the ground and then they would pop up um, I just found these and I just wanted to plant them. It's funny, they're actually from Costco and I saw them and I'm like, you know, I don't want to be exclusive. Like I buy stuff from like, from farms, from some of the highest, you know, most expensive, well cared for nurseries. And then sometimes I buy stuff at Home Depot just to see, you know, how things grow together. And I just think it's a fun experiment. Sometimes I also feel like I'm rescuing trees. Like I'll go to Home Depot, I, I rescued, what I say is I rescued this um, Asian pear. It was like end of the year, no one had bought it. It was like 15 bucks. It was this big Asian pear with a bunch of uh, different Asian pears on it. And I just bought it. Uh, like I'm rescuing you. We're gonna give you a beautiful home. You're gonna be okay. Even if you were sprayed with stuff, you're gonna be okay. So yeah, I just threw these tulips in the ground. I don't think you would normally plant them like that. Um, I think these are kind of meant just for looking, but I just want to see what happens. I trust if I say, hey guys, how you doing? So much love. And I saw, I saw the bees hanging out with you today, um, which is another beautiful thing. The more stuff you plant, the more growth that happens. Oh my God. Probably the very first thing that I did was put in this fire pit. I was like, babe, I don't care what we do with the house. First thing I need is to have a fire pit. I built this last year. This is all just weeds and I mulched it and put the rocks around it. Honestly, this had no plan. People always say plan your garden, but I'm not always the best planner. So one day I just started digging and next thing you know, I was at the, the Home Depot store and I was buying tiles and trying things and it's kind of nice. Okay, so back to this farm thing. I just can't get over it. The sunsets here in Denver. I mean, I don't even have the greatest view one day. A dream for me that I'd say I'm manifesting is to have just complete unobstructed view. But I also really appreciate where I live right now and I love being part of this community. And while well, yes, I crave nature, I feel like my first you know, mission here is to create this within the city. I mean, we live like, we're in Denver City, but we live seven or eight minutes from downtown. We're so close, and to have like an entire food forest farm around here would be amazing. I'm gonna be doing so much planting, I'm so excited. Okay, so just like, okay, here's another point. Um, one thing that kind of messed me up was in Colorado, so every place, you know, you're potentially growing, wherever you live, um, there's this thing called a growing zone, and the growing zone gives you a sense of, you know, what you can grow because it might say like okay like for example we're in 5b in denver and that means we can grow things that are that are cold hardy down to negative 20 degrees so if the weather gets down to negative 20 or up to a certain degree you know that this tree can survive within that realm some trees like lemons will die you know at zero degrees or whatever it is um so uh, understanding your growing zone is important however there's so many elements to that there's no one growing zone your whole house has these different like little microclimates, you know? So for example, over here, 
I might try to put a pomegranate tree. There's one pomegranate that grows actually in one zone higher. So the higher the zone, typically the more heat it can handle. But, uh, but because it's near my house and this is south facing, it hits my house here and it heats the house throughout the day. And then at night that heat releases and there'll be a pomegranate tree here that can maybe survive because there's more heat and because this is south facing where the sun comes from. So it's like you start to understand these different relationships. But I didn't know these things when I first started planting. And um, one thing that's interesting about Colorado is that oftentimes we get these late hailstorms and these freezes that can wipe stuff out. Because if one spring hits um, and things start to bloom, if we have a late freeze and all of a sudden it's like, like this past week it was like 20 degrees. I was freaking running out here covering stuff like wrapping my plants because I didn't want them to die I was worried that it was gonna get too cold and it was gonna kill off these newly sort of dormancy broken trees and then it kind of hit me it's like well, the beautiful thing about a food forest is not every year you know everything's gonna do great but if you have a lot of food and you can feed a lot of people through that you have a lot of different variety and I'm not just growing things like apples and peaches and, and cherries uh, and blueberries and stuff. I'm also growing some more exotic things and, and wild greens and stuff that uh, it looks beautiful and is also edible, like edible flowers. So even if some things don't grow, they're still part of their system. And that has been kind of a big reminder. Like I don't need to stress too much. If something doesn't make it, then it just doesn't make it. So this is, a, this is actually an interesting concept. So this is a pear tree right here. And this pear tree, it's called uh, Claps, no, Alberta. I'm forgetting on the name. Oh no, it's Claps Favorite, yes. Um, I, I like don't even have tags in them, I just try to remember. And sometimes it takes me a second. Look at the moon. I love when you can see that. Wow, come on. Is that something or what? Is that not, is that not magnificent? So, the pear here. Um, I bought this guy. It was the biggest tree that I saw. And in my mind, when I first moved here, I was like, big tree means more fruit. That, that was just this like sort of thing I just assumed, right? I was like, okay, I'm gonna get the biggest tree possible. I'm gonna have to wait the least amount of time and I'm gonna have so much fruit. And it's not necessarily the case. So while well, yes, like the older tree you buy, the more it's into its process. Cause for example, an apple tree that's a year old, it's not gonna produce apples. It's gonna have to, some apple, I don't know if it's like three to five years before they start producing. So yes, older trees have a better chance of producing fruit faster. However, there are so many other factors that size, <laughs> size isn't everything as they say. Um, so this tree, when I got it, it was actually in flowering, which I don't necessarily suggest trying to plant something in flower. Um, I feel like it kind of screws up the system because you're trying to give it a new environment when it's already trying to produce fruit. Basically, when the plant flowers, what happens is the bee, Actually, I'll show you on an actual flowering tree. This, oh my God, what is happening? That is crazy. <sighs> I know I'm throwing a lot of information. I just, I gotta remind myself to pause sometimes and chill. Wow. That is really special. All right, so this is my first tree that's starting to flower. As you can see here, I don't know how close these GoPros get in terms of focusing, but there's a flower right here. So what happens is this tree shoots out a flower. The flower smells very nice. And animals, especially bees, they come and they hit on this flower. <laughs> they, hit on this, <laughs> they hit on this flower. They fly right under the little flower. And in doing so, and in, I don't understand really the process with bees, but basically they're, they're I think, taking the saps. They have a little sugar to make honey. Um, and in doing so though, they hit the pollen here. There's all this little pollen and then they fly to another flower and then they, you know, tap on that one, grab the pollen, also release some of the pollen on the other one. And in doing so, they're actually fertilizing this specific flower. And the more they fly on to, um, the more they fertilize. And what's really fascinating about that is that the moment that flower gets fertilized, you'll start to see this shift. And I'll show you guys later on, of course. This shift where all of a sudden, this little thing just starts shooting out. And that thing turns into a peach. So it's like this really interesting cycle of life where the flower knows it needs to have the scent to attract the bee. 
and pulls it in, gets it to pollinate it, and then gets to produce fruit. And then when the fruit, of course we can eat it, but if a fruit drops and releases its seeds, that's how it can continue to remain alive. Because the, the tree doesn't just care, I mean, I'm talking about a tree as though if it's, it's a human intelligence, it's not, but it's its own type of intelligence, and I need to just show this intelligence one more time. I need to get a viewing deck somehow. That is just phenomenal. I mean, come on. Yeah. All right, back to our little tree lesson. So the intelligence of the tree is it wants, as a species, it sort of quote unquote wants to survive. So it's not just looking after its own tree, it's more preserving the species. It kind of thinks as a whole. That's why it produces uh, a seed, because if that seed grows, well then the species continues on in case this one dies, you know? So anyhow, um, there are certain trees, <laughs> I love talking about trees as though I understand their minds. I have no idea in reality what's going on in there, but these are things we observe and, and kind of make sort of educated assumptions. So peach trees don't need another tree to pollinate. They, you can just have one peach tree and a bee can come on here and pollinate all the leaves. However, things like apples need another tree and usually a different variety to pollinate. So this Braeburn needs another tree like a Honeycrisp or some other variety and this Honeycrisp needs a Braeburn to pollinate. If I only have one tree I will not get fruit. However there is a bit of an exception to that and that is if you live in a neighborhood that has say wild fruits or your neighbor has a wild apple or something then you will get most likely at least get something. Yeah. So as you can see, as you can see here, there's a lot of um, things. That's just like the tip of the iceberg. And all you have to do is know that if you're interested in growing your own food to some degree, it doesn't have to be a whole food forest, it can be literally one plant. If you're interested in that, know that it is possible. It's such really simple. And what I would say is get one plant, even if you have the smallest, smallest, smallest amount of space. If you have any natural light or you are willing to buy a little grow light, you can grow anything. So grow one thing. Grow like some fresh herbs. Grow a little bit of a basil or parsley or something. And just get to understand the process of watering. Because all plants really truly need good soil, which the soil allows their roots to grow and they actually feed off the soil. And you can get just like a potting soil at any store. They need water. They need light. And then of course they need love, so you talk to them. You go around, you don't get frustrated with plants, you say, you're doing so good. Because it might sound silly, but the truth is, they respond to our voices. So if you have those things, and a seed, you know, either get a seed and just pop it in. The cheapest thing you can do is get some soil, some seeds, and have some natural light and water. But you can also buy a plant that's already growing, especially now most places that sell any kind of home good type stuff are probably gonna have plants. So go out and find. <sighs> and every night I think of you My heart's escape. what can I do? I know I'm fine, but you're on my mind You're on Every day I seem to feel Your loves make me want to be here But I know I'm light, I know I'm fine You're all mine But oh, my sad No! Oh.